Hello, my name is Jessica Reidnauer, and I am the multimedia producer here at Euromonitor International. Today, I am joined by Caroline Bremner, who is the Senior Head of Travel Research and one of my favorite people to talk to because one of the main reasons I wanted to start working for Euromonitor was because it was an international company, and I have always been a true lover of travel. So I am always excited to speak with you, Caroline. Thanks, Jessica. And that's great to hear that you're so passionate about travel, um, as are we in the travel research team. And uh, actually, today's topic is is very uh, dear to my heart. Um, it's to do with ecotourism. And I recently travelled down to London to visit our London office. And um, it was a very conscious decision on my part to travel by train and not fly, even though the price of uh, tra- train travel is twice as much as a flight. Um, so it, it really sort of uh, speaks to me about, you know, the importance of personal decisions when we are going about and, and traveling around the world and that these personal decisions do make a difference and can have a really positive impact. So, you know, we've just launched our brand new research and we've included some you know, exciting new data on ecotourism. So I thought it would be really interesting to take a closer look to just see how popular is it um, It is around the world. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing about it all the time. I've subscribed to multiple uh, travel newsletters and, and sites and things, and it's kind of always, always in there. Um, and I think the idea of it being a, a personal choice is now really taking off you know, balancing your desire for sustainability with inflationary pressures, you know, how how will people end up moving forward? Because it is a lot of pressure on either side, our planet versus your wallet. Um, so I think the most important thing to start off with is how do we define ecotourism? Well, ecotourism um, is defined as uh, tourism packages that promotes uh, tourism that is based in, in nature, that, um, you know, takes uh, conservation really seriously, the protection of uh, biodiversity, the local environment. But equally, it's about ensuring that local communities benefit from tourism as well. Mm-hmm. So when, when we think about, you know, a lower carbon uh, forms of transport can be used uh, such as electric vehicles or as, you know, I did choosing rail over air, which has a much lower carbon footprint. It can also mean, um, you know, choosing to stay at an eco lodge or with a hotel that has really strong environmental sustainability credentials. And just it's a generally a more responsible form of tourism. And we often see that it's also the in destination experiences that you can enjoy, uh, you know, community based um, experiences that have strong social and environmental uh, features. And also, uh, it's very important that the sort of the sustainability um, element is sort of fits in with the the global agenda for the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And that is to have carbon emissions by 2030 and uh, to achieve net zero by 2050, if not sooner. And so from our new data, I was really pleased to see that despite the pandemic, uh, that, you know, the the sector itself is worth $10 billion in 2022. Wow. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's fairly substantial. Mm-hmm. But in the scheme of things, it's still relatively small. So it accounts for 5% of all travel packages that are sold through, you know, tour operators, travel agents and, you know, direct suppliers. Right. However, um, some really good news is that it is amongst the fastest growing categories alongside uh, sports, tourism and wellness packages. And when we sort of group, if, if we look at ecotourism in the broader sense, um, you know, and look at sustainable travel that puts environment and um, people at the heart of it, then we can also in, in in capture adventure, culture, heritage, 
wellness tourism, all this sort of could be seen as more sustainable tourism rather than your traditional sun and sea uh, or, you know, sports tourism or, 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 or other areas. So the great news is that um, the split between sustainable travel versus mass market travel is 54% for sustainability versus 46% for mass tourism. So we really are in a good place. Okay, that's more than 5%. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's really uh, a really good position to be in. Okay. But that's not to say that all mass market tourism is bad because we have, you know, really uh, very popular um, and large operators like TUI here in Europe who have, um, you know, very strong environmental credentials and, um, you know, that they joined the Global Tourism Plastics Initiative back in 2020. Uh, they work regularly with the Travel Foundation um, on sustainability initiatives. So uh, mass market doesn't always mean bad. Gotcha. So is there anybody else who's playing already in this market? Anybody else we should we should have heard of? Yeah, definitely. So there, there are some real um, sort of trailblazing um, tour, tour operators and uh, in the travel industry who are specifically, you know, focused on sustainability, such as Intrepid Travel. Uh, they're in the adventure space. Um, and equally, the Travel Corp, and they continue to set the standards for best practice when it comes to environmental and social sustainability. Um, but it's also the mass market players, um, such as the, the big uh, online travel agents like Booking, um, that are including in their search criteria um, information on carbon emissions. And we're also seeing like that from players like Google and Skyscanner. So, it, you know, the mass market players are beginning to shine more of a light on the, you know, the impact that your flight or, or your rail or your bus uh, is going to have on, on the environment. Mm -hmm. And that gives people the opportunity to make those decisions like you did when you were traveling. That's right. So it's, it is about giving um, consumers the right information at the time of the booking. Uh, that's really important. And um, just again, you know, as I say, shining a light um, on this important area. And so that it becomes second nature for consumers to make a sustainable choice. And mm -hmm. that all helps. Um, so, you know, the tour operators and the, the operators are, you know, working on the back end and driving the sustainability initiatives, you know, the drive to, to be net zero, um, whatever stage of the journey they're in, but then also encouraging consumers to make the right choice. Right. Right. Because it's, you know, it comes down to consumers making choices, but also they have to have the choice in the first place. Um, and I know that, like, I mean, here in the States, we just had landmark legislation talking about sustainability and a more sustainable future. So this is like really, really top of mind for everybody right now. Um, but like specifically from an industry standpoint, like what makes ecotourism, uh, sustainable travel important right now? Well, there was a very recent report from the IPCC mm -hmm. saying that the, the window is closing um, to act on climate change. Right. And so that, you know, that makes very uh, sort of depressing reading that we're reaching all these tipping points. And, you know, if we go past these tipping points, then, you know, the, what we can actually do to stop this all happening, you know, it's becoming less and less achievable for us to to reach those targets of of you know reducing carbon emissions by half or you know getting to net zero by 2050 so the time is is really now and as you mentioned the sort of you know um groundbreaking uh, legislation in the states or you know what we've seen in europe uh the eu with the green deal uh, all this in, is really important to uh, firm it up in legislation um, to make that change, you know, uh, actually happen. And it's not just words. Um, there's a lot of talk. Um, you know, I've sat through countless conferences and it's all been about sustainability. But really, the time for talking is over. Mm -hmm. It's about action and legislation and compliance is, is one route. But then also, as we've seen, uh, you know, it's about changing consumers' behaviours uh, changing attitudes. 
Um, and I think it also plays into the fact that every person uh, or every company that works in travel and tourism has a vested interest uh, in protecting the assets that they depend on. Mm -hmm. So whether you're, you know, a luxury resort in the Bahamas, uh, you know, you, you are concerned about your, your local ecosystem, um, the quality of, of the, the water, um, the, you know, the, the jobs that it creates for that local community. Um, even if you're a downtown urban hotel in Chicago, you, you can do things to, uh, you know, pivot to renewables to, you know, have a vertical garden or a rooftop garden to supply the hotel restaurant. Um, you can also create enough energy that you can share it with uh, your local community. So you actually have a net positive impact, um, you know, reducing waste, all sorts of things. So there's everybody can play a part in this. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, you know, it is top of mind right now. And really, the pressure is on, like you said, the window is closing and and we, we're all feeling it. So that's sort of like, you know, desire from consumers to participate in a sustainable economy um, plus legislation. You know, it's it's there right now. But has is this new? Like, has there been a market for ecotourism for a long time? Where are we coming from, I guess? Definitely, it's it's been an area, um, you know, that's been around for a long, long time, for decades, and obviously has taken on uh, more importance. Um, we've definitely seen increased interest from consumers year in, year out, uh, in terms of their concerns about climate change, uh, the interest that they have in wanting to have a positive impact on the environment. Um, but equally, it's it's one of our, you know, sustainable living is one of our long term mega trends that we research at Euromonitor International. Mm -hmm. And if you think back, I mean, um, I know that we've been living the pandemic for the last couple of years, but pre pandemic, there was actually a seismic change in the industry because we had um, the rise of flight shaming, which stemmed from, you know, Scandinavia, where people were feeling ashamed of buying flights and the impact it would have on the environment. We had Greta Thunberg, you know, very vocal, iconic, um, you know, youth leader, really flying the flag for climate change and galvanizing young people to go out and strike and to say enough's enough, we need to act now. So, you know, that was a real turning point. And, you know, travel brands, um, you know, they, they also they can see that the their their traditional markets are aging and they are being replaced by you know millennials gen z uh you know younger generations such as alpha are coming up who are increasingly engaged and passionate about climate mm -hmm. and are you know making decisions based on the impact that they have um so yeah it's it's definitely something that uh it continues to to grow uh, in in this you know the scale and and the level of interest that we see in this area. Yeah, I I think back to like hearing about ecotourism, you know, 10 15 years ago and it, it was a lot more niche. It was like going on a yoga retreat with some hiking or you know like my husband is a is a is a bird watcher, so in the in the birding community, eco tourism and eco travel is kind of like built in to that type of tourism. Um, so it was always like in in smaller communities that it was more it seemed more popular to me. But now it feels like more generational versus those smaller pockets of consumers. Yes, and it, it definitely um, that's why we look at the sort of broader definition of sustainability, including adventure or birding, as you say, tracking, because the Adventure Travel Trade Association and, and their community are very, very driven by sustainability. So, you know, it's in sort of steeped into their ethos and, you know, their their mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's not just your traditional eco lodge or eco tourism. It's, it's much bigger than that. It definitely is, as I say, a mindset. And um, we actually have some some new research from our Voice of the Industry where we ask travel brands, will your consumers pay more for sustainability, you know, travel features? Mm -hmm. And 57% um, said yes. And there was only a quarter that said no. So, you know, there, there really is this sort of the sense that 
you know, it's so front of mind that people are willing to put their hands in their pocket to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, which I know that I'm I am fortunate enough to be in a position where I can do something like that, you know, but what if what about consumers who can't necessarily afford to reach into their pocket? Like you know, inflation's only getting worse and there's more more pressure on on companies to keep prices low so that they can attract more consumers. Fuel prices are going up. So, you know, what happens when when consumers don't have that privilege? Well, definitely, um, you know, the, the inflationary pressures are real. Uh, they're eating into household budgets. Uh, fuel is astronomical. Um, you know, the, there is this sense that uh, life as it was before can't continue. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, it was very extractive and sort of uh, very damaging to the environment and, and to the local communities as well. However, it's about post-pandemic, uh, building a much more fair and equitable uh, travel and tourism industry and, and, you know, model that we want tourism to, you know, to, to, transform into so the, mm -hmm. the values of tourism which are you know uh, creating um, job op opportunities uh, quality of life um, you know there's so many value benefits that it's also balancing that with um, our role to protect and you know to mm -hmm. safeguard the biodiversity and the environment so it's really also about selling the values of these additional benefits uh, so that consumers won't forego sustainability in tough times. And actually, they will get more out of that travel experience because it is sustainable, because you are engaged with the local community in a way that doesn't put pressure on, on their, you know, way of life or, you know, the, their, where they live. Mm. So it's, it's getting the best out of, you know, the situation for everybody. So it's about positioning this type of travel as not just an extra fee on something, but as a value added experience. Definitely. And, you know, f you will also feel that sort of sense of doing the right thing, mm -hmm. uh, giving something back. Uh, that, And I think this is where more can be done to actually show people the value of the of tourism. So when they travel, say, to Barcelona, they know how many jobs have been created. Mm. They know how much money has been left in that economy. They know um, how many you know, sort of carbon emissions have been uh, created, uh, how much renewable energy has been uh, used by by local hotels, et cetera, et cetera. So it is about, you know, educating through sharing a lot of the good practice that's already been being done, mm -hmm. but often isn't seen as the very sexy area of tourism. Nobody wants to really know about CO2 emissions from a hotel, but actually that can make a really positive difference to that person's enjoyment of being in that in that lo that local hotel. So we just need to figure out how to make reduced carbon emissions like an Instagrammable thing, <laughs> then people will get really excited. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, gamify it. Yeah. We know that already, uh, you know, there are apps where you can share, you know, okay, I, I didn't have a shower today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I may have gone to the beach instead. Um, but you know, that kind of information can be gathered together and, you know, you, it becomes fun to compare yourself to other guests. Yeah. And actually I've saved this amount of trees. I've saved this amount of, uh, orangutans and, you know, Borneo, whatever, you know, so it really is about, um, making sort of these small changes mm -hmm. in our behavior, uh, when we're in destination, but equally it's across the whole of the customer journey. Um, and, and that's where it is interesting to see these big players like Google getting in on the act and saying, actually, we're going to, sh we're going to share this information with you because it's that important.
This podcast is powered by Euromonitor Data. Euromonitor is a global market research company that creates data-driven insights on industries, economies, and consumers. We track changes in consumer habits to inspire our clients to help them make better business decisions. Using our products, Passport and Via, our clients can easily find the detailed data and analysis that they need. And speaking of detailed data, in researching this episode, Caroline, can you tell us the top three data points that you were able to find? Yes, so data point number one is that ecotourism is forecast to be worth $10 billion in this year alone, and it's growing at a rate of 12% a year. And if we look at the broader sustainable travel packages, um, for example, adventure travel and wellness, it's uh, even greater. It's $108 billion. So this is brand new research that we've just launched. Data point number two is that 54% of packages booked already are sustainable versus 46% for more mass market travel packages. That's in 2022. So already the balance has tipped to a more sustainable form of travel and tourism. Data point number three, from our Voice of the Industry survey, 58% of consumers would be willing to pay more for sustainable travel. I think this is a really positive data point. So we've talked a lot about what's happening right now, and we've talked a little bit about what the picture looked like in the past. So looking forward, what can we expect from ecotourism? Well, the outlook for travel and tourism overall is really rosy because we have this sort of surge of pent up demand. Um, And so already this year, we're expecting 750 million international trips with a spending of almost a trillion dollars. So these are enormous numbers. And so the industry is rebounding thanks to this pent up demand. And we expect uh, a return to peak levels by 2024. And so, as I mentioned, ecotourism is one of the growth categories in the industry. And so we're seeing ever more interest in this. However, there is that question, how sustainable can tourism be um, when we're talking billions of trips and trillions of dollars? Um, but what we what we're seeing in terms of, you know, destinations and travel brands and consumers is this increased interest in, you know, a sustainable tourism model on the operational side. And then, of course, this uh, desire for authentic and truly experiential, um, you know, in destination experiences from consumers. There is the challenge, of course, with uh, inflation, uh, the rising cost of fuel and energy and food, um, that that ultimately is going to be passed on to consumers. But for now, there's this perfect sort of surge of demand. And, you know, it's giving rise to a lot of, um, you know, positive uh, thoughts in the travel industry that things are finally uh, getting back on an even keel Um But we've learned the lessons of the pandemic. Uh, We know that travel is not a God given right, uh, that, you know, it is um, a privilege uh, and we should be paying for that. Uh, We shouldn't be um, paying uh, rock bottom prices that uh, doesn't take um, account of the impact on the environment or communities. We we should be paying a value driven uh, product, um, and that's so important that these travel experiences are are created in a really responsible and sustainable way, um, and that they are truly beneficial to the local environment uh, communities um, that depend on tourism. And we see this as really important to younger generations. So, of course, yes, on the on the one hand, we've got interventions by legislators. We've got, you know, compliance coming in. Um, the fact that, you know, mo- more and more scrutiny will be put on companies for their environmental and sustainability criteria and, you know, how many emissions they they are producing. But there's there's definitely a sense that, you know, things can't go back to the way that they were before. We need a better, uh, more equitable form of travel and tourism. 
And if not, you know, you're going to be called out mm -hmm. because consumers do care about this. Um, and, and there is already, we've seen this, you know, countless times, you know, the backlash against tourism when it tips out of balance. For example, you know, protests against visitors saying, go home, you're damaging my local um, area, you know, don't leave your rubbish. You know, this extractive type of visitor behavior is, um, you know, it's long gone. It's, it's kind of really archaic. We need a positive visitor behavior so that everybody in the value chain, whether you're the consumer enjoying the experiences or the operator that's creating those experiences, everybody has, uh, you know, the best interests of the environment, biodiversity and communities at heart. So we're, we've talked a lot about like just seismic shifts in the way that consumers are thinking about things. And I'm wondering if there are any other industries that um, that people in the travel and tourism industries could look to to kind of learn some lessons of like what has happened in other industries where consumers have had this seismic shift in their priorities and their values. I mean, there are definitely lessons that we can learn. I mean, if you look at the, um, the sort of just how significant legislation was um, in the tobacco industry right. uh, that, you know, fundamental to changing consumer attitudes towards smoking, uh, threats to life and to, and to health. You know, that's an extreme case. But definitely, you know, if you're looking at travel and tourism and you know that you need to be net zero by 2050, at some point, you know, more and more stringent legislation is going to come in. Mm -hmm. You need to be ahead of that. You need to be riding the the curve and, you know, driving that positive change. Mm. Equally, we know that uh, there are new forms of tourism, such as regenerative tourism, as spearheaded by the likes of New Zealand or Visit Flanders. And, you know, this type of regenerative business models um, are seen in agriculture, seen in construction. So we can learn from those as well. And uh, for me, um, the importance of inclusion and diversity is absolutely critical to a fair and equitable travel and tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we see that fashion and beauty really flies the flag for inclusion and diversity. And this is obviously an area that would be, you know, really important to study and, and take the benefits and learnings from. Mm -hmm. Just do what Rihanna's doing. <laughs> That's the, the main takeaway. <laughs> Of course. And yeah. Um, yeah, we should all do what Rihanna's doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then, of course, there's some new marketing tools like the metaverse. There's so mm -hmm. much potential here. Uh, yes. We're really just scratching the surface of what the metaverse can do. But of course, you know, for destinations and travel brands, brands it's about, um, you know, new ways of communicating at uh, reaching new audiences such as uh, much younger consumers. And of course, through that communication, you can really shape and inform future traveler behavior and attitudes. So there's some really interesting dynamics um, and, and, you know, tools that we can leverage. Mm. So we're talking about impact of travel, you know, like the impact to the environment. What can the travel industry kind of teach other people outside of the industry? Well, what travel does particularly well is um, due to the complexity of the supply chain, um, there's huge amounts of um, partnership and collaboration. Um, so destinations, so that would be, you know, governments working with um, destination management organizations, working with, um, you know, non-governmental agencies, uh, working with uh, the private sector, working with, you know, consumer groups, working with community groups. So there really is this sort of, um, you know, in the best cases, you see this joined up thinking across all the different points of contact. Uh, so that's one area that I feel that we do particularly well. Mm -hmm. Equally, um, we're seeing through our innovation research, uh, you know, through our innovation practice at Euromonitor, uh, just how much innovation there is in the industry. And yeah. it, it's driven um, through, you know, key areas such as sustainability, green technology, next generation transportation, uh, the need to decarbonize aviation, the need to, you know, pivot to electric vehicles and fleet. So that's that's another area 
area that um, you know transportation even though it's the largest emitter of uh, the travel stable, uh, it is one of the areas where we see a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in the destination and experiential side, uh, you know, some really great work about creating um, or co-creating even, you know, experiences with local community groups so that the product itself, the experience is truly authentic and speaks to that uh, local destination and communities. And of course, you know, we're already seeing um, communities themselves taking ever more control of what happens on the ground. So not just in terms of marketing, not just in terms of promotion, but actually, you know, co-creating uh, experiences, running the destination management organizations like we've, uh, we're seeing in Hawaii. So there's a lot of great work being done. I think that it is a challenge because of the complexity of the supply chain, but more and more, People are speaking to each other and, you know, we are moving into that uh, state of action rather than just words. Fantastic. Yeah. More action, please. All right. So we've talked about a lot of things today. So what is the big takeaway here? What can businesses and governments do with all of this information? Well, the most important thing is to start on that journey now. Um, you know, sustainability is a long term goal mm -hmm. uh, and it's about sort of starting small and, and, and you know, just getting on the path. Um, so it's about, you know, starting to, to measure uh, your emissions, um, starting to have your targets and, you know, measure, adapt, share, you know, the good news and, you know, keep keep working towards this goal because it is it's it's a long term goal and it the more people that do it the more we'll achieve it um and and that means that you need to collaborate you need to partner with like minded people so that's why at Euromonitor for example we partner with the travel foundation um you know who are um totally uh you know love sustainable travel and it's about best practices and they've created the future of tourism coalition uh they're fundamental to uh what's happened with the glasgow uh, declaration that was launched at um you know the the global climate conference so you know the cop 26 so the there's so many initiatives out there um you know for us there are roadmaps from the World Travel and Tourism Council about how to become net zero. Uh, there's the Global Sustainable Tourism Council who, you know, have um, destination and lodging uh, sort of parameters and um, action plans for you to, to make this a reality. Uh, so it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about using the resources that are already there. Um, but, you know, starting that conversation, starting on the, you know, on the route map and, you know, uh, just being very positive that you, you, you're doing something, you know, uh, that's going to be very constructive and equally is, is going to sustain your business. Because if you don't do this, you really won't have a business uh, within it. You might have a business in a few years, but you won't have a few business, uh, a business in a few decades. Mm, yeah, get on it. So importantly to me, what can I do? Well, you as, as an individual, you can make an increasingly conscious choice about the travel uh, decisions that you're making. Mm. So it can be, it can start with, you know, uh, you know, where do you go on holiday? Um, how do you travel? Where do you stay? What do you do when you're there? Um, and it's about choosing, you know, operators as well that have strong environmental credentials or, you know, are working with local communities. And so it really starts with your personal choice. Mm. So I have to cancel my um, personal yacht tour of the entire world. I'm afraid so. Oh, dang it. I was worried you were going to say that. Well, thank you so much for all of this very, very insightful information. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. Um, and if the listeners want to learn more about ecotourism, where can they go? Well, first place is Passport Travel. Okay. Um, so this is, you know, an award winning uh, database uh, system that we have at Euromonitor. Um, and there we have information on, you know, 
that's at least, you know, 54 countries wow. uh, looking at ecotourism in particular. But overall, we have um, travel and tourism information on 210 markets. Mm, fantastic. And for more articles, reports, webinars, you can check out Euromonitor.com and our insights section. There will be all kinds of new data um, that we launch continuously. <laughs>